Gordon and today we're going to be using oil pastels and colored pencils. So I have colored pencils here. I'm really only going to be using the black colored pencil, maybe a little bit of the purple colored pencil. So I'm just going to pull those out here. And then I'm going to be doing a pinky sunset. So I'm mostly just going to be using these colors. Reds, pinks, so our warm toned colors. So I can go ahead and remove my cool toned colors out of my workstation. I like to have them near me though, just in case I wanna add a different tone. I'm not limited, so if I would end up wanting to add some blue, I can. But I don't think I'm going to today, so I'm just gonna move them to the side. So I have my black colored pencils and my purple colored pencils. I'm primarily going to be using the black colored pencil. And I'm just going to be doing a silhouette on top of a pastel background. So I have black Canson paper here. Let's see if I can find that pad. So it's just black drawing paper. But if you don't have this, you could do this same project on white paper. The reason why I'm choosing the black paper is because I'm gonna be doing a lot of heavy silhouette work in the front, and the black paper is gonna make it so I don't have to spend as much time coloring with my black colored pencil. And it's gonna make the pastels really um, just have a lot of contrast up here, which is nice. On white paper, um, the pastels will cover very opaque. There's no problem there. The colored pencil, you just have to really work at it to get a nice rich black. So I'm starting with a black base. Um, you could start with a mid-tone paper. You could start with um, a darker colored paper as well, like a purple or something like that. And the black would um, be easier to apply. So that's just a little little thing I like to do sometimes but you could totally do this on white paper so if you don't have the colored paper feel free to use whatever paper you have available so I'm gonna do from dark to light and then I'm gonna have a dark silhouette here so I'm gonna start with my darkest color here which is my red And I'm just going to lay that in and I want it to go from left to right, right to left. So I'm not going to go up and down with my pastels. I'm just going to go one direction. And I'm doing that not because you can't blend pastels in different directions, but because whenever you're drawing, you want to draw with the curve or you want to draw with the direction. So if I'm drawing water and the water is um, horizontal I don't want to make vertical lines because those vertical lines if you don't blend every single one out might show and water doesn't really do that unless it's like a puddle so I'm just adding this dark color in at the top and I really want this to be nice and rich and pigmented so I'm gonna go ahead and add a lot of oil pastels on there. Um, if you want it to be a lighter, more wispy sky, feel free to add less oil pastels. And then I'm gonna go in with this red color. Um, it's kind of a brick red. And I'm just gonna layer. I wanna layer a little bit, not too much, but a little bit on top of the color below um, previous, just so that I have an easier time blending. Today I'm just gonna be blending with my fingers but um, I do have a blending video if you would like to try blending with oil or blending with tissue paper or you'll learn about other things that you can blend with. So that's enough of the red. Now I wanna move into my pink tones and then I'm gonna move into my oranges. So I'm gonna start with, I think I'm gonna, this one's more of a purple, so I think I'm just gonna stick to these two. do my darker pink tone towards the top
And then with this peak down to go probably about here. So I'm just gonna continue and add this pink tone in. My paper wants to move around on me here. That's why I'm switching ends. <laughs> find it easier just to switch ends versus trying to um, tap it back into place every time. Okay, so I've got my pink and then I'm going to do some overlapping again with some lighter pink. And I'm going to do this kind of sporadically because I want a little bit of cloud break. So I'm even going to go up into this red a bit. Then I'm gonna move this pink probably around here, and then I'm gonna leave some room for some oranges and yellows. And you can see how these lighter colors really show up quite nicely on the black. Think that the lighter colors would not show up as much on the black um, but the pastels they really because they're laying on top of the surface and they're not seeping in if I were to do this with a light colored um, watercolor or something like that it wouldn't it would seep right in the paper acrylic it would actually work really well with too um, I do a lot of colored pencil on black paper um, I don't usually use mid-tone paper, I usually use white or black, but a lot of people have um, good, good luck with using mid-tone paper. Okay, and I want to bring this pink just a little bit in some areas down here as well, so I'm going to add that. Okay, so now I have my pinks laid in, and I want to add in some orangey tones. So I want this peach, so I'm going to grab this peach out, and I think I'm going to go just pumpkin orange here, this really traditional yellowy orange color. And I want to build, so there's going to be a sun here, so I want to build the intensity around that. So. Maybe I will do the sun first and then build in. So let me grab a light creamy yellow and a white. So my sun is just gonna hang out over here. And it's gonna be the lightest where it's the brightest, so the center of your sun is going to be white and or the lightest yellow that you're gonna have. And then you're gonna build up your outside with your next lightest color, and then you're gonna get darker and darker and darker as you move away from your sun. And I don't really want it to be that round. I want it to disperse a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow kind of leading up into my sunset. And I'm just going right over the colors that I've added in before I can clean these off the next time that I use them or before I put them completely away. I'm gonna stick them out and clean them. So my next color is gonna be this peachy color. I think I want another yellow tone in here as well. You see how it's already looking like it's getting a little bit softer and darker towards the outside of my sun. And I'm not going all the way across because I want these little breaks of maybe there's like a cloud in here Maybe there's just, it's a wispy day. This is gonna be a desert scene as requested by one of our artists, Jamel. So um, I'm going to be doing some cactus and things like that in here. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with my orange. I definitely am gonna wanna build up another orange in here, maybe um one here as well. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm doing a little bit of blending with my pastel, just right out of the, I guess, tube stick, um, by going back and forth with it here over top of some of the colors. So I'm going over the pink. That's going to give me a nice orangey pink color. I'm going over this um, peachy color and that's really going to blend this transition. And if one of them gets covered up, I can always go back in and add, so I can add more peach in there if I really wanted to. So now I'm going to go in with this, um, it's more of a red orange color and build up some intensity on the sides. We want more yellow in here as well. So now I'm going to go in with my yellows and I'm going to get this kind of school bus yellow happening here. And I want to bring that closer to my sun. With this brand of pastels, um, you see this orange, it's just not as pigmented as the rest of my colors. So I'm finding that I need to go in and add another, an additional color to it. Um, and that's just like when you're trying on clothes, you, they'll all be the same shirt, but one color will just fit a little bit different. Um, it's the same way with art supplies. Sometimes you'll have a brand that you love and one color just won't be won't be great in it so um, doesn't mean that the brand is bad it just means that that particular pigment is not the greatest so I'm just going in with another orange that I like a little bit better and you can see how that one's laying down fine so, it's just that particular one it's a little bit harder than the rest so the formula that they've used is just not um, as creamy as the rest. It's more like an actual Crayola crayon, so maybe it's, it's a little waxy. And so even if you didn't want to blend, if you left it right here, I think it would be a really cool picture. It's really just choppy and washy. So, so I'm going to go ahead and put my pastels to the side. And now I am going to blend this out. And after it's blended, I am going to go in with my colored pencil and draw on my cactuses. So I'm gonna go ahead and time-lapse the blending and then I'll be back for drawing. Okay, so I have this all blended out. Um, uh, my light leaks here are going to be black, but if you do this on white paper, wherever you see this black, it's going to be lighter. Um, if you don't want the breaks in there, you could add more pastel and cover it completely. Um, I really like the way that this looks, so I'm going to move on to my colored pencil. So again, I have my purples and my blacks. I'm just going to go in with my black first, and then I might add some purple later. I'm not entirely sure yet until I see it. Okay, so I left it black down here and that was intentional because I want to do some foreground here and then I also want some big cactuses. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my foreground. So my I'm gonna have a little, not quite a mountain, but a little hill here. And you may need to have a piece of paper towel to clean the oil pastels off of your colored pencils. Um, I just have some tissue here, so just in case it gets really saturated. Um, it probably won't, but it could. So that's why I left it a semicircle here. And you can see that the colored pencil just goes right over. And I want to have it come up just a little bit in this corner. And you can see it's taking off a lot of the oil pastel that I have there, so I'm just going to wipe that out and go over it again. Mm -hmm. 
then if you want, you can go over this part down here with some black oil pastels. You could go over with a black marker. Um, you could use the colored pencils and then fill it in with marker as well. Um, you can't really use marker on top of the oil pastels because oil and water resist. Uh, you might want to try a Sharpie if you wanted to try that, but um, I recommend just using the colored pencils. And I am going to shade this all in because I don't want it to be glossy up here and matte down here. So I really want it to do that, but I'll do that later since you don't need to see me color black on black. <laughs> okay, so now that I have this nice little hill here, I want to go ahead and add some cactuses. So a cactus, I'll do my big one first because I want one that comes up so that it looks huge, but really it's just gonna make this sunset look further in the distance. So I'm gonna start by making the center of my cactus. I'm gonna round it out at the top and then going to have a lot of um, oil pastel coming off because I am scraping a bit off with my colored pencil and then I'm gonna do a make this look like a U, a U shape. And you can make your cactus look however you want. I'm just gonna bring this down to the base. And then I'm going to add another little branch coming off here. And I want this to be connected. I don't want much space in there. And I'm just going to fill this in. And you can see it does a really good job of covering and removing the oil pastels. So with this method, you really don't have to be precise on where you're putting your oil pastels down. You can really just go all the way down if you wanted with your background, if you're not sure of where you want it to end. And then you can just go ahead and clean it up with your colored pencil. This also works if you're trying to get fine lines, like in faces and things like that. Um, do your oil pastel and then do your fine line work with your colored pencil. This is very similar to a method of the scratch cards that I did. I have a video on how to do a scratch card using oil pastels and acrylic paint. I think I used crayons in that video, but the oil pastels work better. I just didn't have them at the time. Okay, so I have a nice solid cactus here. I want to add a few little ones in here. So these are going to look even further away. So when things are smaller in the distance, they're further when they're huge and they're up close, they're closer to you, and they're closer, closer. Yes, Lorna. Um, okay, so I have some little cactuses here. Maybe I want another cactus, another small one hanging out back here. And cactuses, they're really just, they just look like little tridents, right? There's three, but I like to add the little extra lumps and bumps to them to make them look a little bit more natural, a little less um, cartoony. But if you want perfect cactuses, you know, you could do the, the classic long and then on the side you could do your a U shape with a line in the middle. 
kind of like a T that has curves at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna do another cactus. And I want some of the cactuses to come off the page. And that's just gonna make it look like our landscape continues on. So it's not just contained in this space. There's more out there to see. And I really like that in artwork where it's not contained in a space. some little grass. And you could add a little bunny or a little tortoise in here. That would be really cute. And that's it. And you can draw some little birds up here. So I'm going to clean this off, remove the tape and then I'll show you the finished result. If you like this video, or if you wanna learn more about how to use oil pastels and things that you can mix oil pastels with, check out our other videos. Um, like and subscribe so that you can see those videos and hit the notifications so that you know when we put up new videos. Thanks for watching, bye.